Okay, last question. Do you think tech has gotten more serious? Do you, how do you look at the tech landscape as someone who's you know, well-known, you probably qualify as a visionary. Um, the concept, what, what do you imagine we are right now in the tech space? And then we'll get to questions from the audience. I think there's a lot of innovation happening in, in many different areas. Um, the advancements in AI, are, I think, are quite, quite astonishing. Um, the advancements in genetics are amazing. Um, So I think that there is a lot of innovation going on. Um, I think that there's probably a few too many talented entrepreneurs in kind of the internet space, and, and I think their talent actually would be better served in some other industries. Um, but I do think, that, I mean, I don't think we're like facing some sort of low innovation period or anything like that. I think there's a lot of innovation going on. They need to move to other. Uh, I just think there's like if you had some ideal distribution, it would probably really be fewer. Like there's just a lot of talent focused on the internet, and probably some of that talent um, uh, would um, be, be maybe better to have some of that talent in other industries. Um, that, that's about all. But but there's a tremendous amount of innovation that that's happening. Um, it's something that I think is is going to be quite important. Um, and, and, and it's, there's not, I don't know of a company that's working on it seriously is, um, is a neural lace. Um, so you know, going, going back to the AI situation, um, like this is quite an important, uh, quite an important debate. Like the, if you assume any rate of advancement in AI, um, we will be left behind by a lot. Um, and so then we could be in, like, you know, benign, situ but the, even the benign situation, if you have some, you know, if you have ultra intelligent AI, um, we would be, you know, so, so far below them in intelligence that it would be, would be like, you know, a pet, basically. Pet, that's what I was thinking. Like a pet. Cat. Like a cat. Like a cat. Like a cat. Elon be like the a house cat. cat. Yeah, right. it would be like the house cat. Right. Um, and, um, yeah, so that's, it's not the end of the world, you know. It's just, you know well. Sort of pet. You've seen the movie. It could be. Yeah. It could be. It could be. Um, the you know, so that but that honestly that that would that be the benign scenario. Mm -hmm. um, and so house cat is okay. I mean, I don't love the idea of being a house cat. Okay. Um, <laughs> but but that, so what's the solution? Yeah. So I think the um, I, I think I think it I think it's to essentially I think one of the solutions. The solution that, that seems maybe the best one is to have an AI layer. Um, if you think of like you've got your limbic system, um, your cortex, and then um, a digital layer, a sort of a third layer above the cortex, um, that um, could work, work well and symbiotically with, with you. I mean, just as your cortex works symbiotically with your limbic system, your did, sort of a third digital layer could work symbiotically with the rest. This of is something that's in, in surgically inserted or bred so, into the species, or what? The, the fundamental limitation is input output. So uh, we, we already have uh, we, we're already a cyborg. Um, it's just that I mean you have a digital version of yourself or, or partial version of yourself online in the form of your emails and your social media and all the things that you do. Um, and, and you have basically superpowers in, in that with your computer and your phone and, and the applications that are there. Um, you have more power than the President of the United States had 20 years ago. So you can answer any question. Uh, you can video conference with anyone um, right. anywhere. You can send a message to millions of people instantly. Um, you know, you just do incredible things. And, um, but the constraint is, is input out, output. So we're, we're IO bound, um, particularly output bound. I mean, like the, your output level is so low. It's like, particularly on a phone, like your two thumbs are sort of tapping away. Um, this is ridiculously slow. Um, our input is much better because we have a high bandwidth visual interface to the brain. Like our, our eyes take in a lot of, a lot of data. Um, 
So there's many orders of magnitude difference between um, input and output. Um, so mostly, um, effectively merging in a symbiotic way with uh, digital intelligence revolves around eliminating the I.O. constraint. Um, so it's it'd be some sort of direct cortical interface. Um, and you called it a neural lace? Neur neural lace, yeah. Um, it's totally not Google Glass, right? No. I, I'm talking about something which... No, but it's which, like you wear it? Or you... No, I mean, it would be... Uh, I, mean, it, I mean, there are a few ways to approach this, but some sort of interface directly with your cortical neurons particularly. But doesn't that imply uh, surgical insertion? Not or? necessarily. You could go through the veins and arteries because that, that provides a, a complete uh, roadway to um, all of your neurons. Your neurons are very heavy users of energy, so they need high blood flow. So you automatically, with your veins and arteries, have um, a road network to your neurons. Still so some kind of surgery, right? Um, yes, but it, you could insert something, you know, basically, you know, in, 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 into the jugular and, and have... <laughs> It gets macabre, but it sounds I mean, really easy and it, it doesn't involve risk it doesn't it doesn't involve you know like chopping your your, your skull off or anything like that. That's yeah. good. Yeah. It, and plus, you're not a house cat anymore, right? Not a house cat. So, right. um, I mean, essentially, if if we can figure out how to establish a high bandwidth neural interface with ourselves, with with your digital self, effectively, um, then. Uh, then you're no longer a house cat. You know? All right, on and, that and, note, and, no, on that note. Yeah, well, well, I, just one closing thing. I mean, I think that's probably are you the benign in, are outcome. You interested, that's probably the best outcome, I think. Are you interested in exploring this possibility that you have just laid? So, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> I'm not saying that I will, but I'm, somebody's got to do it. I mean, I, I, I mean I, so, somebody should do it. And I mean, if somebody doesn't do it, then I, then I think I should probably do it. But. Uh, <laughs> And, and the goal of this is to prevent there being an external uh, AI, particularly one controlled by a small group of people that could yeah. be so much more powerful and intelligent than we are that the house would be It would be godlike in situation in Yeah. Well, this has been really cheerful. Thank you. Yeah. But, but, if, but if we can establish... I was worried about asteroids <laughs> at the beginning of this. I mean, ast asteroids are a low probability uh, existential threat um, on the time scale that's relevant to us. Okay. Okay. Um, this is different. Artificial intelligence. It's something that you and I have as a, a shared interest, and it's something that our audience is interested in as well. Um, the question here is a lot of experts in AI don't share the same level of concern that you do about the dangers huh. of AI. Fools. What, what Famous specific, last words. What, spe what specifically do you believe that they don't? Well, the biggest issue I see with so-called AI experts is that they, they think they know more than they do. Um, and they think they're smarter than they actually are. Um, in general, we are all much smarter than we think we are, but much less smart, dumber than we think we are, um, by a lot. So this, is, this tends to plague, plague smart people. Um, they just can't, they, they define themselves by their intelligence and they, they don't like the idea that a machine could be way smarter than them, so they discount the idea, which is fundamentally flawed. That's the wishful thinking uh, situation. Um, I'm really quite close to, or I'm very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI and it scares the hell out of me. Um, it's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows and the rate of improvement is exponential. Um, you can see this in things like AlphaGo, which went from, in the span of maybe six to nine months, it went from being unable to beat even a reasonably good Go player to then beating the European world champion who was ranked 600, then beating Lisa Dole, 4-5, um, who had been world champion for many years, then beating the current world champion, then beating everyone while playing simultaneously. Then uh, then there was Alpha Zero, uh, which crushed Alpha Go 100 to zero. <laughs> and Alpha Zero just learned by playing itself, and it, it can play 
basically any game that you put the rules in for. If you, whatever rules you give it, just, it literally read the rules, play the game, and be superhuman for any game. Um, nobody expected that rate of improvement. If you ask those, so, the, those same experts uh, who think AI is not progressing at the rate that I'm saying, I think you will find that their predictions for things like Go and, and other, and, and other uh, AI advancements have, uh, their, their batting average is quite weak. It's not good. 